Hello, and welcome to today's webcast on the Foundation of Flavor Formulation for Glycol-Based Alternatives, presented by DuPont. I'm your host, Denise Ataman, Managing Editor for Perfumer and Flavorist Magazine. Before we get started, I'd like to share a few notes on what you're seeing on the screen. The Q&A text box to the upper right is just like instant messaging. Send in your questions as they occur to you, and the presenter will do their best to answer them at the end. If, for whatever reason, they're unable to get to them, the speaker will follow up after the webcast. Additional resources, such as the slides from this presentation, are available to download. You can find them in the list on the lower right hand of the screen. If you like what you see, feel free to share the slides from the options available on the left. Now, I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Mark Chandler. Mark is the president of ACT Solutions Corp a formulation design consultancy founded in 2012 that serves the cosmetic and topical pharmaceutical industry. With over 30 years of experience, he has worked in a variety of sales, marketing, strategic planning, and R&D roles, and recently worked as a skincare applications manager for Crota. Welcome, Mark. We're happy to have you. Greetings, and welcome to the Foundation of flavor formulation using Zemea, USP, FCC, propane dial, brought to you by DuPont, Tate & Lyle Bioproducts. My name's Mark Chandler, and I'll be your presenter today. First, I'd like to give you an overview of the uh, company that's made this happen and uh, the exciting product, which is Zemea. Who is DuPont, Tate & Lyle? Well, this is a joint venture formed back in 2004 uh, between uh, DuPont, the uh, technology leader with uh, revenues of over $20 billion, and Tate & Lyle, the uh, global leader in uh, renewable ingredients for food, beverage, and industrial applications. Uh, the end goal was to produce a bio-based propane diol uh, using fermentation of glucose. How this all works is very interesting. Uh, first, there's a harvest of renewably sourced materials to give you a product that, which is rich in glucose. Uh, then it's converted to 1,3-propane diol using a, a patented microorganism done under exact conditions and temperatures. And then the product is refined with the end product being a super high purity product, uh, one that's uh, a purity that's not found in most other uh, products used in uh, foods or cosmetics, and in that, all the other materials are removed, the microorganism, the water, and other byproducts. All production of Zumea is done in Loudoun, uh, Tennessee, and has won numerous awards from the EPA, the American Chemical Society, and uh, the state of Tennessee. And it's no wonder that it's uh, garnered so much attention in the industry. Uh, the plant uh, started up in 2006 and uh, was able to produce 100 million pounds of the products uh, at a capacity expansion in 2010 because uh, interest was so high in this product, and there is a, a second expansion uh, plan which will come online in mid-2019. So what is Zumea USP FCC propane diol? Well, what it can do is act as a carrier for uh, flavors, an extraction solvent for botanicals. You can use it as a process aid, a formulation aid, with the assurance that it's 100% sustainably and renewably sourced. 
You can use it to replace either propylene glycol or glycerin in uh, current formulations, GMO-free, gluten-free. It's on the FCC, uh, the U.S. Pharmacopeia. It has grass status. It's deemed 100% bio-based by the USDA bio-preferred program, halal, kosher. It has a cosmetic ingredient name of propane diol, uh, registered with a CAS number, uh, an INEX number, and it has REACH registration. Now we'd like to get into uh, flavor modification and sensory benefits because uh, the whole food and beverage as well as other industries like cosmetic are uh, not just about the performance, but it's so much about the experience. When we look at uh, fresh squeezed Valencia orange juice, and add uh, from 500 ppm on up uh, of uh, Zimea, and also do the same thing with propylene glycol. What you find only with the Zimea is that uh, at 1,000 ppm or higher, uh, you get significant bitterness reduction of the Valencia orange juice, and that is something that you do not get with the propylene glycol. And the levels chosen are such that uh, they would be where you'd want to be if you were uh, including certain other flavors into there and using Zamea as a carrier. In this case, looking at Valencia orange juice, uh, different levels of uh, Zamea and propylene glycol were added, and what was assessed was sweetness. And you got up to a 38% increase in sweetness with the use of Zimea, whereas with propylene glycol, none of those concentrations were uh, statistically different than the control. So add a little bit of Zimea, add a little bit of sweetness. What we're looking at here is a stevia sweetened orange juice and a grapefruit juice. Both of those products have higher levels of bitterness than the regular Valencia orange juice. In the case of the grapefruit juice, and this is where only 5 ppm of Zamea is added. With the grapefruit juice, you've got a uh, directional uh, decrease in uh, bitterness, but not a statistically significant one. But it has to be remembered, this is only at 5 ppm. Whereas uh, in the stevia sweetened orange juice, you did see a statistically significant reduction in bitterness uh, with the uh, product that had only 5 ppm Zimea added. Next, we'll look at flavor solubilization. Now, uh, solubilization is different than uh, dissolving materials. Here is where you use a surfactant solubilizer to make a clear colloidal dispersion in water. So you're taking a water insoluble material and uh, solubilizing it with a uh, solubilizer such that it appears clear. With flavor oil solubilization, uh, you see numbers of different structures for uh, different materials, tangerine oils, spearmint oils, peppermints, cloves, vanillins. They all have different requirements for the level of solubilizer that's used, but in every case, you're looking at a multiple of solubilizer to flavor oil to be solubilized. When you look at the chemistry of the polyols that can be used in combination with the solubilizer, with the end goal 
is being able to reduce the level of solubilizer. You see the Zemea, 1,3 propane diol. You see propylene glycol, 1,2 propane diol. And you see the glycerin with the three hydroxyl groups. Very similar, but very different in the way they behave with flavor oils and solubilizers. In the flavor oil solubilization study, where we were solubilizing these materials in water, 0.5% flavor oil, we used lemon oil, lime oil, tangerine, spearmint, and clove, 10% of the humectant, and 1, 2, or 3% uh, of the polysorbate 80. And in this case, we used the tween 80 from Crota, which will be uh, later this year will be offered as a 100% bio-based uh, product. So that's something new to the industry. The humectants that we looked at, the Zemea, propylene glycol, glycerin, and polyethylene glycol. The method that's employed for this study is good practice for any sort of application where something is being solubilized as opposed to dissolved, whether it is a flavor oil, a fragrance oil, a vitamin, a botanical, uh, anything. Uh, solubilizer and flavor oil should be mixed together. Uh, if that's added uh, to a batch, uh, it will work much better than if the solubilizer is added first, then the flavor oil on top of that. Unfortunately, what you get is some localized gelling in that case. If a humectant is added to that mix of flavor oil and solubilizer, it goes in much more easily and quickly. And what you create is a colloidal dispersion or solution. It's not a true solution. It's a solubilization. And uh, that is the best way to get best effect out of your solubilizer when solubilizing any sort of insoluble material. The aspects that we're considering uh, in this experiment is first the ease of mixing. How well does the humectant, the solubilizer, and the flavor oils uh, mix together? And in the case of glycerin, because it's more viscous than the others, it's more difficult to make that premix uh, possible. The second one is localized gelling. Uh, solubilizers, uh, and virtually every solubilizer is like that, and uh, polysorbate 80 is no exception, is that when they first hit the water, you get localized gelling. Some of these solubilizers have some foaming characteristics to them, so the last thing you need to be doing is to chase around these gel regions and create foam in your batch. And the biggest aspect, though, is to be able to use the least solubilizer to get the greatest clarity. For numbers of flavors, this was seen is that uh, with 3% usage level, of the solubilizer, tangerine oil, spearmint oil, Zemea, and propylene glycol performed the same, whereas glycerin and polyethylene glycol really struggled even at the 3% use level with uh, products like tangerine oil and spearmint oil to uh, get clear and remain clear. When looking at solubilizer levels, uh, in this case, you have 10% Zemea, and you see going from 1% to 2% to 3% of the polysorbate uh, between 80 is uh, you're increasing in uh, clarity. That's a half a percent of lime oil, 3% between 80. You'd think, wow, that's a, uh, that's a high concentration uh, needed. Were you to take the Zemea, out of the mix and have the, the tween 80 uh, work on its own with lime oil, you're 
looking at maybe three to four times the level of solubilizers. So you're significantly reducing the solubilizer level needed uh, with the use of the Zemea. Now, okay, there's a cost issue that comes into play, but even bigger for flavor work is the fact that for all its charms, most solubilizers like polysorbate 80 don't taste very good. They give you a soapy aftertaste. So if you can reduce the level to the point where it's not detectable from a taste standpoint, you have won the game. With the solubilization work and uh, spearmint oil, you did see a, a benefit to using the uh, Zemea. Uh, whereas with tangerine oil, uh, propylene glycol was slightly better for uh, getting a, a clear colloidal dispersion at the lowest concentration of the tween 80. But bearing in mind that if the goal is to be more sustainable and bio-based, uh, well, uh, Zemea works very well, and as opposed to uh, another bio-based option, which is glycerin, which doesn't work very well at all. So if the goal is great performance and being bio-based, uh, your only viable option is Zemea. Continuing on the theme of using humectants to reduce solubilizer levels and, uh, and wanting to be more bio-based, an, an observation with glycerin was that numbers of samples initially were not clear, uh, but got clear over time. And the understanding of that is that the inherent viscosity of glycerin being so much higher than the rest uh, decreased the ability to uh, have the solubilization be mixed properly so that you got the clarity initially. It took time uh, to have those samples be clear. And in, when you're in production, you need it to be clear right away with minimal agitation. So, Zemea, USP, FCC, and solubilization. That idea of mixing flavor oil, humectant, and solubilizer first. The Zemea does a wonderful job of eliminating the localized gelling that you see when you add that mix to water. It's consistent and reliable. It worked well with all uh, the flavor oils. And in every case, it, it performed as well as propylene glycol, but it's bio-based. You were able to significantly reduce your solubilizer levels, and you're going to get it significant taste improvement through reduction of the solubilizer levels. For all their charms, they don't taste very good. The Zemea helps, and the whole package is of natural origin. And so you really get what you're looking for when you're doing a solubilization of a flavor oil when you use Zemea. Getting polymers into solution is never any fun. Uh, there are some good practices to help that out, but uh, many formulators have tales of woe of trying to uh, coax and cajole a, uh, a polymer into water without the negative effects and without having to use a whole lot of mixing energy and a whole lot of time. What was taken were two popular gums, xanthan gum and carboxymethylcellulose. 1%, uh, 5% humectant, which is fairly low, and uh, drop that into water. So 
mixing the polymer and humectant, add it to water, check the ease of mixing, settling, and clumping. Best practice for uh, everyone in any industry using a polymer is to first mix it with a humectant. You mix that together and you add that to the batch. What was done in the experiments was uh, either hand mixing to simulate a low shear environment and a propeller mixing for the high shear environment. And in this case, yes, we are creating a true solution. Ah, yes, when xanthan gum is added directly to water, uh, you get clumping. <laughs> and with low shear, it doesn't improve as it's stirred. And those clumps gel up over time. With the propeller stirring, well, you get different phenomenon. You get to see the wonderful uh, fish eyes and gel balls and uh, Many of us have delightfully, or less so, chased those fish eyes around with the propeller until finally they all go away. And uh, many of us have seen that when you think you've gotten them all, you're probably wrong. When 5% Zamea, 1% Xanthan gum mixed together first, Added to water, hand stirring, simple hand stirring, hand mixing, to make that 1% xanthan gum uh, go into solution. With the uh, propeller stirring, obviously the same thing. Uh, completely smooth and homogeneous, almost instantaneously. an interesting fine shade of difference with the propylene glycol. Uh, you got some clumping initially, uh, but in, uh, eventually it becomes smooth. And with the propeller stirring, uh, it made a nice, smooth, homogeneous mix. But it took a little longer. When polyethylene glycol was used, uh, things got worse. Uh, the mixture settled, and then you had gel clumps, and uh, ultimately with the hand stirrings, uh, it went in. Uh, with the propeller stirring, it was smooth, but you'd still see a few gel clumps uh, uh, hanging around. In the case of xanthan gum and glycerin, uh, you had numerous issues. For one, uh, mixing the xanthan gum into the glycerin is much more difficult than the others because of the higher viscosity and uh, made it very difficult with the low shear stirring to get it into solution. But there was this odd phenomenon of it becoming somewhat stringy. Uh, in the process, whereas with the higher shear mixing, uh, what was observed was that there was less of the uh, wetting that was expected uh, in, during the premix, which didn't show itself up until that was added to the water in the high shear mixing, whereas it, you did get, in this case, the uh, fish eyes and gel balls of, uh, coming forth. And one got to chase those around until, uh, until all of them could be found and gotten into solution. With CMC, carboxymethyl cellulose, uh, what you got throwing into water was instant clumping. And what you got were large and dry clumps that were very, very difficult to wet into water. With the higher shear mixing, you got smaller dry clumps uh, dispersed throughout. You could stir and stir and stir 
and uh, they didn't seem to dissipate. CMC is more difficult uh, to get into a solution. Uh, the challenges are a bit different than the xanthan gum. Uh, when 1% CMC is added to 5% Zamea, that added then to water, you do get some polymer clumps that would settle uh, smaller throughout, but with continued mixing, uh, low shear mixing, uh, they all went in. Whereas uh, with the propeller stirring, everything happened extremely quickly. Uh, no clumps, and you got uh, small bubbles formed, which is a real demonstration that that uh, polymer at 1% had been fully hydrated into the water and was starting to uh, work its uh, uh, zero shear viscosity of, uh, magic and uh, hold those bubbles in place. So uh, CMC takes more mixing, but with the Zamea, everything could happen extremely quickly. With CMC and propylene glycol, and uh, to me, this is always fascinating to see the differences between uh, propylene glycol, which is 1,2 propane diol, and Zamea, which is 1,3 propane diol, that you see differences in application. Whereas with the propylene glycol and CMC, that mix sank to the bottom again with the low shear, but you still had the large clumps and this gel region at the bottom, which was extremely difficult uh, to uh, break up and to bring out. Well, uh, at the high shear, as opposed to the Zamea, which happened extremely quickly, uh, with the propylene glycol, everything happened reasonably quickly, maybe at the same, uh, same rate as the Zamea, except there were a few large polymer clumps uh, which were uh, quite intractable. And you could say, well, they were very similar, uh, but it's like saying, well, yeah, that's a beautiful car, except for those three dents. And so you, you see the big difference in a small difference in chemistry between Zamea and propylene glycol. With CMC and uh, polyethylene glycol, uh, which is uh, uh, petrochemical derived, see a different phenomenon. You get the small gel clumps, but they would have a dry center. The CMC uh, did not wet very well in the polyethylene glycol prior to the addition to the water. You can break up those clumps uh, with <laughs> stirring. Uh, but then they would continue to gel, which made things very difficult. Whereas with the high shear mixing, uh, there were just small gel clumps uh, throughout. What was uh, alarming when, uh, when one thinks about a production setting is that if you gave it a quick glance, everything looked homogeneous. It wasn't until you would stir it more that you would see these small uh, gel clumps. So you could mix your CMC and polyethylene glycol, throw it into water, and think the job is done, yet when it would be packaged or the consumer would look at it, uh, they would notice the small gel clumps. Yes, with glycerin, uh, we're swimming upstream again. Uh, mix the CMC and the glycerin. The glycerin, because of that higher viscosity, uh, makes the whole operation more uh, difficult. And uh, again, between uh, that mix and then the mix into the water, again, we're seeing this stringiness that uh, manifests itself. That stringiness ends up clumping 
when you're stirring it because um, probably that rheology is so different and you've then created a complex interaction between uh, the glycerin, the CMC, and the water, uh, which might not be uniform, but then you see that really showing up in the creation of a thick layer at the bottom. Getting that even with the higher shear mixing is difficult because uh, that premix is so thick. And uh, just when you think you've gotten the job done, you'll see a couple of clumps at the bottom and then other ones suspended. And if there are other materials in your batch that uh, might foam, this can be a difficult thing to add your polymer in, which brings up another issue uh, with regard to uh, using polymers in uh, emulsion products. Say, for instance, a sauce or a, uh, a dressing. In this case, uh, formulators, uh, as in cosmetics, they would like to see the polymer uh, mixed into the water and know that it's going to go in uh, you know, very easily and quickly. They'd like that confirmation that it's all in before they start to do the rest of the processes. If you're making a clear product, that's fine. You're going to do that. If you're making an emulsion, uh, probably what you don't want to do is add the thickener ahead of time because then you make the whole operation of emulsification much more difficult. You would like to add it at the end, but if you are fearful of all of these negative phenomena taking place, you're not liable to do that because you never get that confirmation that everything is fully hydrated, whereas if you use uh, Zemea with xanthan gum, CMC, or another host of, uh, of gums, you can confidently add that uh, mix at the end, after the emulsion is created for your sauce, your dressing, whatever, and know that it's going to go in quickly and easily. To sum up, using Zemea, USP FCC, with uh, gums and thickeners, and this information, as well as the uh, uh, flavor solubilization information, is transferable to a wide range of uh, food applications and then into uh, cosmetics and industrial applications because so often, Solubilizers are used even more often are polymers used uh, to build zero shear viscosity for uh, stability, for suspension, for uh, rheology modification. So improving that ease of mixing is so important. Eliminating the settling and the clumping uh, at the low shear can be very, very important because some of your processes are going to be uh, low shear. You need that polymer to wet in the humectant fast. You need that mix to wet very fast into your water without localized gelling or clumping or settling. Uh, when you think of clumping and the CMC, which uh, is not alone in that effect, but with CMC, it's just uh, there enhanced, is all of them except Zemea exhibited that clumping effect. Uh, with uh, xanthan gum, you did see that both with PEG 300 and glycerin, but not with Zemea or propylene glycol. But if one is choosing between the two, Consumers, so many cases, are now uh, preferring bio-based, so you'll go in that direction. 
So uh, using Zemea in the low shear environment as well as the high shear environment and eliminating those fish eyes and gel balls which will help in uh, the small scale but more importantly in production because sometimes in production they are really hard to see. So when you think you've gotten them all, you might not. But with Zemea, because the elimination of the fish eyes happens so quickly, you get uh, so much better effect. And you're able to then add that polymer mix to an opaque system, like an emulsion, like a, a dressing, like a sauce, and uh, not have to worry about it not going uh, into solution uh, in a uniform manner without a lot of uh, shear. Zemea is a carrier for sweeteners. A lot of dynamic in the marketplace now as individuals are wanting to go lower sugar. And uh, especially they want to go uh, lower high fructose corn syrup. And uh, so having a carrier for sweeteners can be extremely valuable uh, to the uh, food and beverage formulator. All of these sweeteners are perceived to be, uh, well, natural but also uh, healthier. Even the granular sugar, the cane sugar, perceived to be uh, not as bad for you as high fructose corn syrup. Uh, stevia, sucralose, monk fruit, all uh, high potency sweeteners, all four of these have an issue. And that issue is getting them into solution. It takes uh, time and sometimes uh, considerable effort. Ease of mixing, speed of mixing is a huge issue uh, with these uh, different sweetener products. And it doesn't matter whether it's at the uh, consumer level or in a uh, soda machine, or in a manufacturing setting, that uh, time is money and uh, very impactful for consumer acceptance as well. Granular sugar uh, takes some time. Uh, it took, and, and all of these were done at a, a parity level of sweetness. And to get that level of sweetness into water, regular granular sugar uh, took almost a minute and a half. Stevia is a real difficult one uh, to get into solution. It took almost three and a half minutes. Sucralose isn't bad, but still, uh, it took almost a minute of stirring to get uh, sucralose into uh, water where it was completely clear. Whereas uh, monk fruit was, uh, was the winner or uh, loser, depending on how you look at it, in a time to get in solution. It, uh, it even beat the stevia. Mix any of these with Zemea and uh, they will go into water almost immediately. That can save time, that can garner you consumer acceptance, that can uh, enable you to offer uh, new and different product forms in different venues, which is quite exciting. Lower sugar beverages are becoming very popular and have gained a lot of interest and they make a lot of sense. What the consumer would like is uh, the use of the more natural perceived uh, high potency sweeteners to make up that difference in sweetness. 
So uh, one of the experiments was to mix Zemea and the stevia. And it takes a little bit of heat to uh, get the stevia completely mixed into the Zemea. And as a new product offering, this could be a product that w could be offered for sale where uh, this mixture, uh, anhydrous mixture, now there are liquid versions of high potency sweeteners uh, on the market. They're generally diluted in water ahead of time and someone else has done the heavy lifting of uh, spending the time and the effort and the mixing energy uh, to get uh, these various high potency sweeteners into water. And then they can be added to uh, a beverage or, uh, or other food product. The downside of those is that uh, those need to be pres uh, preserved. And, uh, okay, sugar is an enemy uh, from a health perspective, as many people view it. Also, preservatives. And so if you're offering this perceived to be a more healthy option in a liquid, easy to use version of a high potency natural sweetener, but it's got a preservative in it, well, you may lose more than you gain. So uh, what was done in this work was use that as a way to make a quick and easy low sugar uh, you know, child's drink mix. And uh, there we're able to reduce the sugar from 18 to 9%. Uh, the mixing time uh, greatly reduced and, uh, and the flavor enhanced, or at least the negative aspect of the stevia that some perceive appears to be uh, reduced or eliminated with the use of Zemea. So what was found with uh, high potency sweeteners? Uh, for one, in this case, the Zemea and Stevia uh, mix, once that's prepared, goes into uh, water within seconds as opposed to Stevia by itself taking about a minute and a half. In the case of Stevia in a low sugar uh, or reduced sugar uh, drink mix, uh, you could reduce the aftertaste that that stevia uh, has. Uh, Zemea itself has a nice, uh, you know, cool, sweet taste, uh, which has been used in uh, other applications like uh, uh, toothpaste and, and mouthwash. And what you have the possibility of is, is offering a liquid uh, sweetener concentrate that uh, could be sold and that the consumer would add uh, to their beverage of choice. As well, uh, possibly, it, uh, it allows for its use in uh, soda machine uh, flavor concentrates, whereas it's generally artificial sweeteners, the high potency sweeteners that are used that will stay in solution and not drop out. So there are so many uh, different applications uh, for Zemea and the use of high potency natural sweeteners. Now here are some final thoughts with regard to using uh, Zemea in uh, beverage applications with uh, flavors and sweeteners and gums, uh, it's uh, quite exciting, the new product forms, uh, the improvement in processing that can be seen uh, with the use of Zemea. In conclusion, we saw in the very beginning uh, a reduction in bitterness in uh, orange juice, which opens up uh, many different potential uh, product variations in that category. Increasing the efficiency of flavor oil solubilizers is uh, critical to the uh, formulation of uh, 
beautiful looking and tasting uh, products. The solubilizers uh, tend to uh, exhibit localized gelling when added uh, to water with the flavor oil. They also need to be used at high levels. The use of uh, Zumea, USP FCC, allows you to reduce the level considerably, which uh, improves the taste of the product and uh, decreases the processing time and energy involved in, uh, in the production of, uh, of clear products which would contain a flavor oil. With regard to gums and thickeners, Zumea uh, greatly increases the, uh, the efficiency of uh, mixing of these products into water and uh, takes care of all those uh, awful issues with regard to fish eyes and gel regions uh, that can be seen uh, with dropping a polymer directly into water, which is never a good idea, or uh, using other humectants. None work as well as Zemea for gums and sickness. The potential of uh, using uh, sugar, granular sugar, or the new uh, natural uh, high potency sweeteners getting them into solution much more quickly and the potential of improving the taste aspect of some of these natural high potency sweeteners is quite exciting and opens up uh, many, many ideas and venues for doing uh, lower sugar uh, beverages and other products. There is great potential for future development in uh, beverage and food applications uh, through the use of Zemea. Uh, you're able to make better tasting, easier to be made, reduce sugar beverages. Uh, the idea of making clear beverages with flavor oils added uh, that have reduced solubilizer levels uh, so that the consumer doesn't taste the solubilizer, but they do taste the flavor oil. Uh, very interesting possibilities there. The prospect of offering an easily dissolved uh, liquid high potency sweetener product to the market is quite viable. Using that speedier addition of gums and thickeners those products that you use for mouthfeel, suspension, and uh, thickening and rheology modification can now be done much more easily and quickly and allows for different process variations where that mix can be added at the end rather than at the beginning. Time and energy greatly reduced and reducing the prospect of having undissolved polymer in your product is, is quite appealing. And there, with this potential uh, for development, creative combinations of using all of these ideas uh, to make uh, products that not only perform, but also excite uh, the consumer offering uh, new combinations, new effects, uh, new uh, product offerings. And all of this with Zemea, that's a bio-based product that's sustainable and renewably sourced. The potential applications are uh, especially thrilling. We mentioned drink mixes and juices different uh, variations on themes that could be made there, uh, carbonated beverages, whether they're uh, coming uh, dispensed from a soda fountain uh, or in bottles, different variations, especially the, the low sugar ones uh, with different flavor oils added could be uh, room for the development of quite a different range uh, of products that are available today. 
coffees and teas and all the things that are added to them, whether that would be at a coffee shop or at home, uh, the ability to uh, reduce sugar, change mouthfeel, do all sorts of different effects uh, the, of products that could be added to coffees and teas is quite interesting. And uh, sauces, soups, dressings, and also uh, the confection area where we'd want to build a lower sugar product. All of these uh, are up now to the creativity of uh, food and beverage formulators to see how they can use Zamea uh, to best effect its effect in its own right, but more importantly, how it makes other things work better and more easily uh, used. This is Mark Chandler, president of ACT Solutions Corp. And I'd like to thank DuPont, Tate, and Lyle Bioproducts for developing and producing uh, such an incredible product as Zamea and allowing us to build a foundation of flavor formulation. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation, Mark, and thanks for your attention, everyone. And now we'll go into the Q&A portion for the next 10 minutes with uh, Mark answering your questions directly. Our first question is, uh, can Zamea be used in an oil mixture product to prevent separation? Well, that's a great first question. Uh, that's an interesting study, the thought that you'd use a somewhat polar material to couple uh, immiscible oils. And uh, tough to give a general answer, but uh, through some study of Hansen solubility parameters, uh, there is a good opportunity to do that, very similar to when you have immiscible oils, that a little bit of water uh, can be used to couple them. So uh, probably not in every case, but uh, it's always worth a try to do that. So whether you're making a, uh, a clear oil product or even an emulsion, having immiscible oils is uh, 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 coupled is very important, and Zamea may well help uh, in just very small amounts, 1% or less. Great question. Thank you. And our next question, is Zamea odorless and tasteless? Well, uh, it's uh, got a little bit of uh, sweet odor to it. It's very, very low. Uh, in terms of the taste, it has a very pleasant, cool, sweet taste uh, to it, which is of great benefit in a number of these applications. Another excellent question. Going into applications, is there a limit for Zamea for oral care applications, such as mouth rinses? Well, uh, oral care, uh, mouth rinses, toothpaste, uh, thankfully are considered cosmetic and not meant to be ingested, uh, so there isn't a limit on uh, the Zamea. And if the question is, is there a limit uh, because of uh, taste issues, well, it turns out that uh, uh, Zamea is a fabulous uh, thing to use in an alcohol-free mouthwash we've made conventional alcohol-free mouthwashes using 20% Zamea, and we've had a, a similar reduction in the solubilizer level needed to solubilize the peppermint oil, the menthol uh, for an alcohol-free mouthwash. And if you've ever tried an alcohol-free mouthwash, they're not very pleasant. Uh, we feel like that with the Zamea at 20%, uh, we've been able to reduce the solubilizer level to a point where you don't sense the soapy taste. And for a therapeutic mouthwash where you're looking at methyl salicylate, camphor, eucalyptol, and solubilizing those, 
which are really difficult solids, uh, some of them. A 50% Zumea makes a fabulous uh, alcohol-free therapeutic mouthwash uh, that you will truly enjoy. Okay, and our next question. Has this comparison been performed against glycerin or other benchmarks? Ah, uh, yes, another good question. Uh, I assume that's specifically with regard to the bitterness reduction. Uh, it was not chosen. Glycerin was not. Uh, it's a naturally derived product, but glycerin has uh, an initial sweet taste, but it ends up with uh, a, uh, a warm sensation uh, in the mouth, and uh, and it leaves uh, a bit of a, a taste in the back of the throat. So glycerin was not used in the bitterness reduction test because it uh, in itself sort of moves you in the wrong direction, whereas the, the nice cool taste, uh, the only thing very similar would be, say, sorbitol. And sorbitol being a crystalline solid doesn't uh, help out a whole lot unless you're talking about oral care. Uh, and in that case, with the toothpaste, a sorbitol uh, propane diol, Zamea blend, is fabulous for a sulfate-free uh, toothpaste product. Thank you. Good question. Okay. And can Zamea be used in bakery flavors? Formulation. Uh, yes, it can, and it's. Uh, I think that's a that's an application opportunity that uh, truly should be explored. And there, with bakeries, uh, you can use the flavor part. You can use the carrier for any sort of uh, uh, gums. It's a great way to integrate, say, uh, emulsifiers uh, into a, a bakery application. Good one. And our last question, how is it labeled? On a consumer package. Ah, uh, propane diol, if it's a direct food additive and uh, natural flavor, Yeah, natural flavor if it's used in a, a flavor package. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, that is all of our questions for the day. And uh, if you'd like to view the slides again, you can download them at any time. And I just wanted to say thank you again uh, for joining us. Thank you, Mark, for sharing your expertise. And uh, we wish you a wonderful day. Wonderful. Thank you very much.